Captain. Whatever I do, I do it to protect you. So you understand? I understand. So the first few seconds of this trailer give us some great backstory on Jin Erso. You find out that her father was basically forced to work for the Empire as Director Krennic with his Death Troopers in tow that came directly to their home and forced him to come with them. Now you can get the idea of him forcing him when her father tells Jin that he'll do anything to protect her. She understands that. I think he's saying this is because the Empire is forcing him to come and if he does not come, they will hurt Jin. And I think that's why Jin is such a rebellious spirit when it comes to her growing up because the Empire forced her father f away from her. And that created a rebellious spirit. Now I definitely think that's going to play a huge role in the film as it moves forward. You want to get out of here? Our rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. You think you might be able to help us? When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? Now it's these next few shots of the trailer where do you really see the main story of Rogue One coming out. You see that Jin has been rescued from this Imperial holding cell by the Rebellion and is brought to the Yavin 4 base apparently. Now when she reaches this Yavin 4 base, this is what really interests me. It seems that the Rebellion already knows Jin Erso's father is working for the Empire in this situation as it was revealed in the international trailer that he contacted them. Now I find it very interesting that they reached out and got her directly. This leads me to believe that her father may have told the Rebellion to go get his daughter because he probably thought she'd be the only person who'd be able to get him out or get the plans for the Death Star and I find that very interesting and I really like pondering this thought of was this all set in motion by Jin's father was he the reason this team came together was he the reason the plans for the Death Star was taken and I really find that interesting I really want to see how that plays out it appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon if my father built this thing we need to find him all right, how many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue. Rogue One. Now next you get a shot of an Imperial installation during a rainstorm apparently. I don't know what planet this is on. I have a feeling it may be Jetta. Now at this same base, if you pay attention to the first official trailer that dropped during the Olympics, you may recognize this base as an imp rebel attack occurred here and it may look like it was an ambush now you do know that Baze and Chi Roots were on hand for this battle as well as they were there in the previous official trailer so it seems that some kind of major attack is taking place here it may be a mission to break Jin's father from the hands of the Empire maybe you have to really don't know but it seems something very important will be occurring at this base that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? Now, as the action begins to intensify in the trailer, there are some interesting things I would like to point out. Of course, first you see one of the first shots of Darth Vader for this trailer is Karenic explains the power of the Death Star to him. Then you see a shot of what appears to be Grand Moff Tarkin walking into the room you can see director critic in the background they're all dressed in white you see a targeting computer career on the screen and it looks like it may be targeting jetta which as i stated may be getting fired upon by the death star and then later you see this shot now this shot is very important to me if you notice this little area where it's going on right now you may recognize it from the teaser trailer and the official trailer. This is where a small conflict occurred, where you saw the tank explode, stormtroopers going everywhere, Jin and Cassian are in this area, and in the last official trailer that was released, I pointed out that it looks like some kind of assault is happening here, maybe an attack on a rebel outpost or an ambush by rebels, because it looked like this may be some kind of major conflict as TIE fighters are flying above all that, and now in this trailer you see that same tank is there, it is destroyed, there are dead bodies everywhere people running and you see an atst has arrived to the scene meaning that something important is happening at this location 
for the Empire to respond with ATST walkers. So I'm really anxious to find out what happened in this particular moment. I have a feeling it's in response to the rebels breaking Jin out of prison, but we really just have to wait and see. We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. They have no idea we're coming. Take hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. We'll take the next chance. And the next time. You're all rebels, aren't you? Now, as this trailer comes to a close, there are some things I really want to point out. First, I want to point out some of the obvious stuff. You look at the Imperial installation, which is on scale. If you can see rebels making their way to it, it looks like some kind of jungle warfare is about to take place here. Then you see a shot of Kacian, Jin, and K2SO on their undercover mission. Kacian is an Imperial officer. K2SO is, of course, an Imperial droid, so he doesn't really need a disguise. And Jin, I have no idea what Jin is. I want to guess she's an Imperial gunner, but that armor does not look familiar to me. Then you see a shot of Vase and Chi Root possibly scouting in a rebel ambush, which was seen in the previous trailer. I believe it's an ambush. Then you get a shot of these guys, which look vaguely familiar to something I remember in The Force Awakens. Do you remember the character that, one of the characters that Finn went away with when he was attempting to leave everyone behind? He looks like he wore red armor. He looks like one of them, maybe an earlier version of them. They may be a part of the same group or same race, and this is just kind of an earlier version or a different rank that somebody may have among them i really don't know but he looks really familiar similar to that character and then you see a shot of Bayes rescuing chi root from stormtroopers blasting them all down what's interesting he looks like he's raising from a crashed x-wing i do not know if he was in the x-wing or he was attempting to rescue a pilot that was in it but he seems to have just exited that x-wing then you get a next shot of x-wings and y-wings bombing that same imperial base that was raining it looks like it may be an ambush to me because no TIE fighters have responded as of yet. So it looks like the Empire was not prepared for this assault. Then you get the shot of somebody running into an installation. I believe it may be Budhi Rook who is present on the ground for the Battle of Scarif. Then you get the shot into a space battle. And what is very interesting about this space battle, it doesn't look like it may be just some kind of simple rebel ambush. It looks like it may be a full scale assault because if you look in the background, you can see what may be a fleet of rebel ships as you can make out a few Nebulon B frigates and then later you can actually see a hammerhead design ship. What's interesting about the hammerhead design, they were recently brought back for Star Wars Rebels. So that may be the Star Wars Rebels connection in Rogue One. That was hammerhead design ships which were a part of the Old Republic's kind of design which of course is not canon but thanks to Dave Filoni and Star Wars Rebels that design is once again canon and it is appearing for the first time in a film that being star wars rogue one and then you see this shot which was something similar to the last trailer it is the landscape of Jeddah being destroyed which leads me to believe the death star is fired upon but this is what i now believe i believe saw Gera is the target or he is just living in the area where the death star was test fired because if you notice this area is not inhabited that's not the city where Jeddah, well, the main city that we see in all the trailers, that's just, just somewhere on the planet, and it's being destroyed, and then later, you see Saul is in a building, and it looks like things are crashing around him, I believe he was not able to escape due to his poor state, because as you saw in the earlier trailer, he is missing some body parts, he has robotic legs, so I don't know what he went through to his time in the Clone Wars to now, but it looks like he is not able to move as fast as he was able to during the Clone Wars. And I find that very interesting. And then also, to round it all out, you see Vader, once again, coming out of the smoke. This is probably my most favorite shot, and that's even including the first Death Star shot. Like, that was the most awesome shot of Vader I've seen as of yet. I'm really impressed by this. I really cannot wait for Star Wars Rogue One. But that's getting about it for this breakdown, guys. Be sure to tell me down in the comment section down below. Did you enjoy the second official trailer for Star Wars Rogue One? Be sure to leave a like and share this video with your friends if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to Ron's Guild for the latest and greatest Star Wars Rogue One content on YouTube. Until next time, this has been Logan the Fire from Ron's Guild. I'll definitely see you guys in a later video.